Hey, it's me again. Rant number three. And uh, why am I a little hoarse? And I don't mean like a Shetland's pony, but why is my voice tired? Well, I uh, just recorded a, a new cover song, which is uh, something new for me. And I will not talk about that right now. I'll, I will uh, get you back to you on that a little later in this rant. First, I will talk about Master of Puppets, the song. And then you will get a sample of Master of Puppets, the song, and then you will get a little sample of this new uh, thing that I've been doing. Anyway, so, um, how you been? I've, well, I've been good. Uh, anything new happening in my life since last time I ranted? Well, yeah. I, I got a dog. It's the most badass chihuahua you'd ever seen. His name is Lars, and he has, uh, he has an inverted cross on his chest. It's about the most metal chihuahua you've ever seen. <laughs> anyway, I'm feeling good. And I want to talk to you about how my philosophy behind how I worked or how I worked with uh, Master Puppets, the song. <clears throat> which will be out uh, sometime really soon. <clears throat> the thing is about Master of Puppets, the album is that I, like I said earlier, it's one of the reasons why I've been, why it's taken so long is because I wanted to do it right. Because, well, you know, Kill Em All is a good album, Ride the Lightning is a good album, but there's, you know, there was still Metallica, in my opinion at least, they were kind of formative, they were kind of honing their sound, and, you know, Kill Em All has some, excellent tracks Ride the Lightning has some excellent tracks like Cthulhu and Fight Fire with Fire and Bells but there are some like like a jump in the fire is a song that I never really understood or it never got to me and um, same with uh, a couple of other tracks uh, you know but but Master of Puppets, Master of Puppets is an album to me that will stand, that would like a hundred years from now, it'll still be the best metal album or hard rock album even of all time. I'm convinced of that. That album is perfect from start to finish. Even the weakest track, which I defined as Leper Messiah is still a badass track. It doesn't mean that it's weak, it's just the weakest. <clears throat> In my opinion at least. Um, Alright, settle down. Um, Master of Puppets, you know, it's, it's, I think it's on, if you go on Spotify and check out Metallica's most popular songs, like a top 10 or something. I think it's Nothing Else Matters at the top, and then there's Master Puppets on the second. And that's, yeah, those songs are really different, but it, you know, it's an, and Master Puppets is eight and a half minutes long, and it's progressive, and it's long and intricate, and it's still such a popular song. I mean, that just goes to show how incredibly well written that song is. So as I sat down to, I, I did several takes on, on that one. I mean, several attempts, if you will. I think I did three attempts before I found something that I found an idea that I, um, that I liked. So what I did was basically the f when it kicks off, I, I um, the original is in a tempo around two ten, and I I I cranked it, man. I turn up the speed. Uh, there's no and you know it's such a some of, some of you have been complaining that I'm not down picking fast enough. Well, I can down pick Master Puppets, the original, uh, no problem. You know, black end and. Uh, and through the never and stuff, it's no problem for me, but I cranked it, and I, the, the down picking is not really, I didn't want to focus on, on that, 
with this song well this cover i so i turn up the uh, the tempo made it a lot more intense i think well you'll be the judge of that i guess i think it's awesome what I, what this my version of it i think it's really cool uh, and the thing is you know when i'm sort of meshuganizing songs metallica doesn't really have all that many weird time signatures but Meshuga do and that's why I find Meshuga so interesting because they have this weird time signatures and these polyrhythms these two rhythms on top of each other that seem to work out really you know to it's catchy to me at least and that's one of the things I've been trying to do with Metallica songs and the other songs like Alice in Chains and stuff try and um, add an add up uh you know uh some notes or subtract some notes so that it's, instead of being four or six it's now seven or nine or something like that and i haven't done that all that much on on master puppets and song and not really that much on the album either but you know one of the few songs that of metallica that is in seven is master of puppets the verse uh, so I left that in and you'll you'll hear that when you hear the song uh, but I've decided you know I did I pulled a Thomas Hawke on that one and let the uh, the snare you know the snare continue on as it if it as if it was playing eight you know uh, so there's actually some polyrhythmic in there finally at last I know some of you have been commenting that oh it's not polyrhythmic enough to be a sugar cover and stuff like that I, I don't really care but um in, in the end what i wanted to do was to make a really badass cover in the sort of in the style of mashuga or sort of modernizing it or making it a bit more contemporary or whatever which is a little futile when it comes to this album master puppets because it's timeless you know it's still you know you hear that it was recorded in 85 but it's still relevant in every wave in every second every note on that album is still relevant you know uh, it's such a mind-blowingly awesome album <laughs> So anyway, the f uh, first part all the way to the, uh, that's uh, melodic uh, twin guitar part in the middle. I turn up the uh, the tempo, made it really intense, really fast singing. Uh, it doesn't really let up all that much. And then uh, I've slowed down the uh, mid part. That's basically, I guess that's pretty much in the same tempo as the original. And then I speed it back up again when it comes to, uh, yeah, that last break when the guitars are alone, you know, I sped it back up there again. Um, and you know what? For the first time uh, since um, all the, the covers, since I started doing these covers, I actually think that I've nailed the solos really well especially the fast ones uh, Kirk's solo on that song is legendary and very correct characteristic Lee Kirk Hammett and and I've never been able to rep to do what Kirk Hammett does with his left hand especially on, on those 80s albums he's really fast um, so I'm really I, I still haven't been able to copy him 
you know his uh, his solo completely but i think i did it a real good job this time and um, i can't wait wait for you to hear it um as far as you know i've always felt like there's more to uh, this concept concept of mushuganizing stuff than polyrhythms i think you know there's the vocal style there's the uh, the down tune guitars um, there's the intensity there's the use of uh symbols instead of of of, of hi-hats and stuff like that i mean lars ulrich he plays on the hi-hat you know he plays on the hi-hat <laughs> that's it and he has this this for fast some fast parts he has this i have no idea what it is but he plays on the right side of his kit on some sort of china you can't really hear weird weird stuff man so and again i, I wanted to i don't i wanted to do this album justice <laughs> justice no that's the next album man yeah anyway i wanted to really keep the i didn't want to fuck up this album because i love master of puppets and i had to at least make a, a version that i love too so this um i guess um as a whole the song master of puppets doesn't really deviate that much from from the original but i've i'm you know i used a bit of mashuga cording some dissonance and uh, uh and yeah it's a lot of alternate picking instead of just downstroking downstrokes and the thing that should not be is well i'll get to that in the next rant i guess um uh, it's uh, sort of heavy <laughs> so um yeah i hope you're satisfied with that um description and uh if you have any questions just post them and i'll i'll try and answer them um yeah other than that i can't wait for the winter to be over it sucks with winter in norway right now it's uh just cold and dark and sort of miserable you know and i can't wait for the spring to come and uh i've also you know what i've done i've i put a window in my studio up in my studio and my studio i i hope that my studio will be ready to use at least within a month God damn it! I hope so. Uh, it, it'll be a lot easier and cooler for me to film videos when I have my new studio because it's pretty big. Um, so I can't wait wait for you guys to see it. So what is this other cover that I've done? Well, I just had this idea uh, that you know, um, which actually came from the fact or or, or, uh, or uh, some thoughts that i had about master puppets that it has the album it's such a um uh groundbreaking album which has so many different types of styles or genres on it like uh you know battery has uh, in my opinion at least has a, a grindcore riff you know that the double bass part put a blast bit on that and you have a napalm death uh part you know and then you have uh the intro to what struck me was the intro to disposable heroes uh put blast beats on that and you have a d-side song and if you're not familiar with d-side <laughs> i hope I hope that you are because they are the most uh, if not the most one of the legendary death metal bands from from florida uh, so i hope for your sake that you're familiar with that scene 
because I love death metal and especially those bands, Cannibal Corpse, Morbid Angel, Decide. <clears throat> um, so I thought, dude, just fucking do a Decide version of Disposable Heroes. You know, cut off the fat and just make it a short, intense, a fantastically brutal version. I mean, the, the original Disposable Heroes is brutal on its own, but it's not death metal. But that intro, dun, 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 you know, put, put blast baits on that, and you have a D-side song. And so that's what I did. And for, the, for those of you who know D-side and uh, their vocalist, Glenn Benton, he has a very... <laughs> He has a very, very special uh, singing technique. I mean, he sounds so fucking mad, like frantic, frantically, insanely satanic. And uh, I always felt that I've done, uh, I can do a pretty good Glenn Benton. And so I, the song is finished and I want to film a video for it. So... Until then, uh, I don't know when it's going to be out, but it's I, th I think it rules, man. And I've I really I went for the um, a really late '80s, like mid to mid '90s, um, Morris Sound production with really scooped guitars and a lot of dry drums. And that really, um, really, really characteristic special. Uh, Florida death metal sound. And I ba sort of based my mix on this uh, song, this version, on uh, the mix of Once Upon the Cross, the album. If you haven't heard it, I'll, uh, I'll put a, I'll, I'll put a, you can check out my description and I'll put a link to Deicide in there so you can check it out. And that's why I'm a little hoarse because, uh, well, I don't think Glenn Benton has any singing technique whatsoever, and I've really tried to find a singing technique uh, that works for me without me losing my fucking voice, which I have done now a little bit. But, you know, it, it, I've, I can do it every now and then, sing like a fucking maniac, and it's that's also very, you know, therapeutic. It makes me feel good to just fucking scream and not think about anything. And uh, I'm a little hoarse, but in a couple of days, I'll, I'll be back to normal again. I never really lost my voice singing, but now I'm hoarse. Uh, <laughs> you like horses? So anyway, uh, oh, by the way, another fun thing that Lars Ulrich said, because people w were criticizing, you probably know this, but he, he was, uh, you know, justice for all has been criticized up and down for being having such a lousy production. I love the production. Uh, it's the guitars are just so fat. And, and I, you know, James Hetfield's guitars are legendary anyway. So I'm just, oh, there's only guitars and drums on the album. F fine with me, but it's scooped. There's no mid tone. It's scooped from a sort of mixing audio production sense means um, a very little mid tone. In the guitars you know this all you guitar geeks out there and it's kind of frowned upon i love it though and i actually i always wanted to do a a mix like that and i think i nailed it pretty good so you uh, i'll let you know when it's out and uh, you can uh, check it out and uh, here's a little clip <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> Hope that uh, made you a little curious. <clears throat> um, anyway, Lars Ulrich said that well, you know, people have criticized uh, um, 
actually actually people criticized me for for having the, the hand in the mix it's such a bad mix and well actually actually, actually uh, all the death metal uh, tra metal uh, albums from florida had that mix in the late 80s and, you know late 80s early 90s so everybody copied my style Harry. That was probably the worst Lars Ulrich impression you've ever heard. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> right, thanks for... Um, thanks for listening, and I'll... Um, I'll see you later, I guess. Stay tuned for... Uh, master. Master. See ya. <laughs>